Today, we are going all hippy-dippy as we talk about the soul of the plane. Something that you need to analyze, respect, and appreciate. Because we all know it's a soul that gives you control. The more time you spend working with your hand planes, be them metal or wood, you're going to find that as you gain experience, your fingers for a lot of operations are going to start migrating to the underside of the plane, the sole of the plane. Because they not only act as fences, but as you get uh, accustomed to uh, setting the depth of a hand plane, you will notice that a lot of people will keep their fingers underneath. Because you can, your fingers are actually some of the most sensitive instruments you have, and you can feel a few thousandths of an inch. So by simply rubbing my fingers along the bottom, I don't have to look at where the blade is. I can tell, hey, it's centered right now because it feathers off on either side. So as I'm adjusting it, whether I'm tapping it or I'm using my thumb wheel, I can control the bottom of the plane a lot of times a lot better than sliding down it. At least as you're getting used to it, start feeling it and it'll get you a lot closer to your end re what your end results will be before you start looking. And then when you get it dialed in, spend a few seconds running your fingers over that edge, training them so that you can tell when you are at a thousandths or going a little bit heavier and taking a few thousandths to really get through the wood. Let your fingers control the depth. Also, as you're planing, a lot of people will sit there and they'll plane a board with their hands on top trying to get 90 degrees. And that's great and wonderful. But it's hard to tell as you rotate it. If you slide your fingers underneath it, all of a sudden, you, there's more of a sensation. You can tell in relationship to the board since you are now touching the board. Beforehand, you're not touching the board. So what are you drawing your 90 degree relationship to? Underneath, I can tell, oh, it's going left or right. Plus, if you're like me and you put a slight camber on your plane, you can use your fingers as a fence to either push the board over to one side of the blade or the other to get it to a point where it is planing dead center. Real easy adjustment. It just takes a little bit of time, a little bit of practice to get that feel. So, next time you're working with your hand plane, concentrate and see if you have the opportunity to rest your fingers not only on top to center your pressure, but underneath to adjust its angle and position. A little bit of practice will give you a lot more control. It's a soul that gives you the control. So, for today's bonus, I'm going to talk about Frank Straza again in a video he produced a while back. But before we do that, if you like this video, you could do me a big favor by liking, favoring, subscribing, do all those social medias, telling your friends, or visiting my website, wortheffort.com, where not only do I have a lot of swag, uh, but I also have my own woodworking, I produce a blog, and in the future I'm going to have a lot more shop-made tools that will help make your life a little bit easier at the workbench. Now, Frank has been a local hero in the Texas region as far as education and woodworking goes along. And quite a while back, he produced a video on saw sharpening. And I personally think it's probably the best video out there on the subject. Because he really does go into the minute detail. I'll put a link down below to it if you are interested in that kind of stuff. I know I covered some basics earlier, but Frank takes it that much step, a step farther and does a lot more quality control in his execution. So, check him out, Frank Straza on how to sharpen a handsaw. Links down below.